Hi everyone and welcome to the latest video and in this video we're going to be taking this unwanted media unit I think that's what it'd be classed as for want of a better word this was really kindly given to me by a friend a girl I used to work with Chris thanks very much Chris she is doing some work in a house and she had some furniture she no longer wanted so she asked me if I could do anything with this and I definitely think I can and hopefully you'll think the same at the end of the video. This is a really good piece of furniture. It was solid, solid wood. I think there was elements of oak in there. There's other sort of tropical wood species in there. Very, very heavy. Stay tuned till the end of the video and you probably won't recognize this piece. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm David. And I restore, restyle and refinish old and loved furniture. I use a variety of methods and techniques to bring this forgotten furniture back to life. Welcome to my channel. One of the changes I wanted to make to this piece of furniture was to remove the shelf that was inside. I just thought it spoiled the, the lines of the piece. So found the screws that was holding that in and just removed those quite easily and then removed the shelf, which like I said previously, everything's really heavy on this piece and the shelf was no exception. The next alteration I wanted to make to this piece was to actually lift it off the ground. This just had stubby feet on it, which I wanted to remove and replace. I didn't realize it was going to be such a pain in the backside though, as you will see in just a second. I wish I'd have just left these as they were, but once you start, that's it. After a lot of swearing and a lot of time had passed, I managed to get the legs off the unit. And all I wanted to do really was just to cut those down so they were flush with the bottom of the unit. I managed to do one in situ, as you can see there. So all I'm doing here is, is re-gluing them back after all that effort to, to take them off. <sighs> yeah, in hindsight, it, it was a pain really, but I wanted these to be flush so I could attach the new legs. Whilst I'm giving this piece a thorough cleaning, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you for everybody that supported the channel. From the comments, the likes, the subscriptions, um, the people that have done the super thanks where they donated to the channel, and also people that have bought me a coffee or two. I really appreciate it and hopefully I'll keep making videos that you enjoy. Thanks again. A lot of the old finish had either disappeared or broken down on this piece. So just to remove the rest, I used the sander. 
and as you can probably see from the grain in this piece I think it had been grain filled in the past but that just added to the character for me so fully sanded the outside and give the inside a scuff sand which will give you an idea of what I'm going to do Have you got your chew? The design I'm doing is predominantly wood, but with a small area painted. So I needed to mask off the areas I didn't want to get any paint on. And that's what I'm doing here. So I purposely masked off just short of the edge because it's just easier to clean those edges up after you've sprayed, which I'll show you in a second. The stain blocking primer I'm using here, I mentioned quite a few videos back in that it was a, a, a great cheaper alternative in the UK to the Binzinza. However, this has now gone up from £7.99 a tin to £14.99 a tin in the space of 12 months. So it's even more expensive than the Binzinza now. No idea why, I shan't be buying it again. I got this furniture paint from a factory shop and it's a factory shop that sells all sorts of things at reduced prices and I just wanted to give it a go on a piece of furniture and I was really pleased with it actually. It was, it was really cheap but it good great coverage and give a really nice, um, really nice smooth finish. So it's in like a mustard yellow colour. What you saw me doing there was I was just hand brushing in some of the finer details just because I didn't want any paint runs in those areas trying to force the paint into those grooves so just a little brush to do that first. This is the slight gap I left with the masking tape and I'll show you now how easy it is just to clean that back with some sandpaper on a wooden block. Most of the time I will sand up to 120 when I'm staining but I wanted this to be really smooth, so this got a very quick pass over with 240 grit prior to staining. And as usual, remove all the dust with some compressed air and a bit of mineral spirits before you start the stain. I'm using a different top coat for this one. I'm using a, a Danish oil. Really easy to apply, just simply brush it on. You leave it for about 15 minutes and then just wipe away any excess. And it leaves a really nice sort of between a matte and a satin finish. Uh, this piece had 
three coats in total with a very fine sanding in between coats. My original plan was to use wooden legs that matched the body of this unit but as you'll see in a second these that I purchased from Amazon were terrible quality and they really didn't hold up this this weighty piece of furniture it even looked like it was going to bend the brackets as you'll see in a second so I went on to a plan B. Even though this was a plan B, it was actually one of my original thoughts to use hairpin legs and I decided that because of the weight of this piece, this was the way to go. I just didn't like the black, so I decided to do something about that. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please consider subscribing, hit the like button and the notification bell for future videos and here is the finished piece.